a UN draft document, says global warming is on course to exceed the limits set in the Paris Agreement by around 2040. It's the UN's starkest warning yet of the risks of climate change. The report says governments can still cap temperatures below the agreed ceiling of one and a half degrees Celsius, but only with rapid and far-reaching changes in the world economy. In 2015, nearly 200 countries set a goal of limiting warming to below a rise of two degrees above pre-industrial times, but that pledge was weakened by the US, which pulled out last year as President Trump continued to promote, continues to promote false Fuels. Well, for more on this, uh, let's talk to Tim Crosland, who's director of Plan B, a UK charity supporting legal action to tackle climate change. Uh, Tim, thanks for joining us. Good Bit of a wake-up call, this. It certainly should be. I mean, 1.5 degrees might just sound like a number to a lot of people. The call in Paris, when governments agreed to limit temperature to that level, was 1.5 to stay alive, and. That is the call that really sums this up. This is an existential threat. Um, it is an existential threat to all of us, to our societies, to our economies, to international security. If that isn't enough to wake people up, it's very difficult to know what is. Is it people who need to wake up or is it governments? It's too much for individuals to handle on their own. There's a complete fantasy that this is going to be solved by people changing their habits of consumption. This needs to happen at scale. Um, our infrastructure needs to, to change. This has mm. to happen with support from government. I, I mean, the line from the report is rapid and far-reaching transitions in the world economy are required. How does that happen without the effective involvement, if not leadership, of the United States? It happens by people all over the world demanding that we do whatever it takes because we face an existential crisis, we face an emergency. Um, Donald Trump is obviously a huge disappointment in terms of what the world is trying to do, but there are many, many Americans that he doesn't speak for. Um, we've got the mayor of New York at the moment suing fossil fuel companies for the costs of putting a wall around Wall Street to keep the floodwaters at bay. Um, we, we, we've just got to find a coalition of the willing mm. um, and do whatever it takes uh, as soon as we can. I, I mean, Tim, I, you know, I was at the Copenhagen summit in 2009. That was sort of billed as the, the, the first big global focus of attention on, on this issue after Kyoto, of course. I mean, that was all about ordinary people and campaigns amongst NGOs lobbying governments to do what was right. It was followed by m many others. There was Bali, there was Durban. How much more lobbying by ordinary people of governments is it going to take? I think the demand has to be recognition that this is an emergency. What would the UN report tells us, the 2040s, this is the time between people having children now and those children leaving school, uh, graduating from university. This is the time frame we're talking about. We know the enemy is at the gates. If it was a physical army, we'd need our governments to say, this is a state of emergency, we must all pull together. And, and that is precisely what we need to happen now. Can you flesh out what your particular plan would be to make this happen? So once it's recognised that, that the enemy is at the gates and this is not an enemy we're ever going to overcome because it's the laws of physics, it's the laws of thermodynamics, we have to intervene. We have to make sure our economies are geared towards meeting this challenge. Um, we, we have to control them. We, we have to, as in a time of war, you would say we've got to stop building uh, leisure cars, we've got to start using that steel for tanks. It's that kind of mentality we have to get into. Fascinating and sobering stuff. Tim Crosland, thanks very much for your time.